Hello and welcome. In the Granada Film Library, we have many jewels in our crown, but shining through most brightly of all must be that of Coronation Street, the world's longest running and most popular drama serial. Well, here on Granada Plus, you're going to have the opportunity to enjoy it all over again. In the past, there was normally just one chance to see each episode of Coronation Street. But on Granada Plus, you'll be able to see an episode each weekday, and that episode will be shown at different times throughout the day, plus a five-episode omnibus on Sundays. So, whatever your lifestyle and whether you're a street fan yearning to relive your favourite moments, or a newcomer to Weatherfield past and present, you've certainly come to the right place. We're calling our series Classic Coronation Street and we're taking our starting point from April 1976 when the show had already been running for 15 years. But that's because it was a particularly pivotal moment in the street's history. Many of the characters from the early days are still heavily featured. But there's also a host of recognisable faces from today. At least, I hope we haven't changed beyond recognition. But you can be the immediate judge of that because I'm in the very first scene. None of my doing, I assure you. If you're worried that you're going to be missing out on the early years of the street, well, fear not, because we'll be bringing you special blocks of Coronation Street episodes. And these events will be featured regularly on the Granada Plus programme schedule. The first one is to be the life and loves of Kem Barlow, and you can see it on Saturday, October the 12th. So, welcome to classic Coronation Street. Hemlines and hairstyles may have altered, but one thing remains constant, the proliferation of strong female characters. As you will see, some bear the scars of past tragedies, while others seem like innocents abroad, just eager to see what life has to offer them. I'm not a kid. To me, you oh, are a well, kid. Yeah, to you. There, you see, as soon as you open your mouth. I didn't mean because you were old. I meant because you were sophisticated and that. Dishonest with it as well. Can you give me one good reason why I should let you stay here? Well, I can. Because I'm daft. I didn't say as daft as all that. Do you know the difference between human beings and animals? Um. Well, human beings always make the same mistake. Animals don't. They say if you never make a mistake, you never make anything. Well, in fact, I, I didn't go into the green room. Uh, that's where we all sit and congregate. And I didn't venture in for three months. I sat outside, and I mean, it wasn't as, I was 25, I was supposed to be grown up, but I sat outside on a window ledge for, uh, for three months, not daring to go in, because they all had their own seats, and uh, the f uh, I, I went and sat on Vi Carson's seat, on <laughs> unknowingly. <laughs> she, she, was very, she was very nice, but it was her seat. <laughs> I do remember coming to my first rehearsal and walking into the rehearsal room and being absolutely terrified, just terrified. I mean, it was like walking into Madame Tussauds, but they moved. And eventually we were told to go and sit in a corner, which we did, and uh, about ten minutes later, Doris Speed, who played Annie Walker, came along. And um, she said good morning very nicely and moved off to talk to some others. And when she came back in a few minutes, she said, now, could I have my chair now, love? And <laughs> I was just covered in embarrassment and moved on to another place. I remember she came up to me one day in the studio and she said, Adele, dear, I always know your scripts. And I thought, oh, is this good, you see? And I said, oh, really, Doris? And she said, yes, dear, you always mention food. <laughs> oh, Mrs Walker. Do come in and sit down, both of you. Um, aren't you going to introduce us, Fred? Oh, Mrs. Walker. Uh, Doc, uh, Vera, Duckworth. How do you do? Hello. <laughs> I've seen you in the bar before, haven't I, dear? <coughs> oh, yes, I've been in. I thought I had, yes. <laughs> well, shall we start? Uh, tea, Miss Duckworth? <coughs> Mrs. Atchley. Man, jam, party. Really? I'd set all my props under the bar, waiting 
and Doris would swan on, and she, she had this habit of looking up to the looking up to the screen all the time. It was wonderful. Go on to do my scene, no props. I thought, oh my, and it's live. And I think, oh god. And I'm flying around finding all these these props. And I came off afterwards. I said, who moved my props? She said, me, dear. I don't want anything in my eye line. Isn't it wonderful? She just moved everything. She wouldn't have anything on the bar at all. So everything went. But oh, but she was lovely. Doris' stories are absolutely endless, and uh, but my very favourite, because I was there, <coughs> was with um, an actor called Roger Brearley, who was a very tall actor, and he was doing a scene with Doris over the bar counter, and of course they rehearsed for a day, uh, a week in fact, and um, then it came to the dress rehearsal, and she, uh, and he was sort of doing a lot of bobbing the mouth and all this was going on, and she said, uh, Roger, um, why are you doing that? Because, uh, you know, I mean, you didn't do that in rehearsals. Why are you? He said, she said, I'm trying to get my shadow off your face, Doris. And she said, quite right. The dole queues are full of young men who have cast shadows on my face. And then she looked at me and winked. <laughs> is it any wonder that the country is in the state it is today when heads throb like dynamos at 8 o'clock in the morning but never at 8 o'clock at night? No, Mrs. Walker. Do German heads throb with such regularity? Or French heads? Or Belgian? Well, I've no idea. But you're all right. Fine. Well, I suppose that's something. There was no doubt in the first episode, the very first episode, and we were all very new and, and uh, most of us unknown and, and nervous. Uh, there was Violet Carson, a wonderful person, a name in her own right from various things, sort of face you could break rocks on. And you just felt that she was the grand dam. She was in charge both off and on screen. That's a disgrace. Hasn't a bit of polish on it for donkey's ears. Well, I'll, um, I'll leave you to it then, Mrs. Shoffle. Yes, I'll manage a lot better without you breathing down my neck. No. I do want you to know how grateful I am to you for stepping into the breach like this. You know, it really is too bad of Mrs. Longhurst. She said she'd be back on Easter Saturday. Never Saturday. trust a woman that set out on a manhunt. A manhunt? A manhunt, Mrs. Sharples. It's no use pumping me. I know now. Ina Sharp as Violet Carson was a perfect lady and a very elegant lady. And I don't know how ever they made her look like she looked. She seemed rather uh, str uh, strange, a li little bit distant to, uh, to speak to. And, and so it was quite a long time before you, you said much more than good morning. And uh, I, know, I remember once they were, we were all broken out into singing in the green room and uh, we were singing hymns and uh, oh, five or six of us and at the end of it she said oh well, you see some of you girls have been brought up properly <laughs> enjoy your holiday what's it got to do with you i'm going to be texted this morning aren't we well, it's just that some people are too damn nosy that's all well there's not very much goes on around here that i don't know about yeah and i bet you get all the wrong end of the stick and all i don't think so you went to see your Linda. Len Thackle thinks you had a dirty weekend with Dave Smith at Brighton. You know it all, don't you? Yes, and I know something else as well. It's high time you two stopped behaving like a couple of lovesick kids. All right, Mrs. Sharples. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Don't you get your hair off of me. I'm not Len Fairclough. Vi Carson um, used to wear like, couture uh, clothes. I mean, you could see the hand stitching. I don't know where they came from. But the most beautiful uh, you know actors now come to work in jeans and t-shirts and we have to I and mean, we don't have time for anything else and the turnaround's quick and you're working but in those days those those ladies used to arrive in um furs and um beautiful jewelry uh, it's a female show there's no doubt about that um a lot of it isn't action but gossip about the action that's why you need your meeting places of the rovers the corner shop etc um, and I think that's part of its attraction. I think people like a gossip, don't they? I make no mention of names, but there's a certain woman that comes in this snug, and you know who I mean when I say she looks like a weasel in specs, as has got a big mouth. Oh, did you hear what she said just then? Right. Now, don't do nothing of yourself before Martha. Eve, no worm can turn, you know. 
Nothing like a nice old saying, is the mini? I've been keeping me ears cocked. Right, well, I'll remind you of another one. Listeners here, no good of themselves. You'll excuse me interrupting you, but... Oh, um, don't worry, Elsie, this lady's just going. This lady's not going anywhere till she's had her say. Well, do you mind if I get mine in first? I trust you've seen this evening's paper. I have that, and believe me, Elsie, you have my pity. I know shut what... Shut up, you, and I'm warning you. If you don't learn to keep that flaming lying gob of yours shut, you're for the eye jump. Oh, nice language. Beautiful. Somebody never went to Sunday school. And what exactly... Vi Carson was, um very living St Anne's uh, and underneath that hairnet there was a beautiful head of silver hair she always I remember she used to wear lovely woolen suits and um, and very good antique jewellery and I had nothing to do with her at all because I was terrified of it oh will you send me a couple of them pies for my dinner love Oh, good morning, Mrs. Sharples. Up your old tricks, are you? Late again. May I say how nice it is to see you so early in the morning? Their day can only get better now, can't it? Ta ra! The day getting better, she only changes for worse. Who's this then? Really, Bradshaw, at your service. Oh, yeah. And I've no need to ask who you are. No. Mrs. Sharples, right? That's right. And from what I understand, I've got to keep on the right side of you. I hope you'll try and keep on the right side of everybody. If you're taking the shop, that is. I just thought I'd try it, see how I like it. And how much we like you. True. That's uh, your brother down at Len Fair Clubs, isn't it? Yes, that's our Terry. There's just the two of us. We used to live round here. I went to St Margaret's C of E School and Weatherfield Girls High School. So you see, I'm clever in spite of my Lancashire accent. Now, you know my life story. What can I do for you? Give me five ten pence pieces for me gas. First round to you, Mrs Sharples. <laughs> Only one chocolate drink has all the taste of Cadbury's and is low in calories. Every day should have its highlights. One of the street's longest standing and most familiar faces. So I've lived in this street for a long time and that's exactly how it is. He has been described by actor William Roach as a homegrown intellectual. I resigned because it wasn't my kind of job. Because if I've been there for a thousand years, I've never got used to the idea that the firm is bigger than the people in it. On Saturday the 12th of October, William Roach looks back over some of Ken's life. I'll sweep the streets, but I'll put money on that table and pay for my food and keep. Or I'll get out altogether. And loves. Valerie, I'm talking about my life. I'm not discussing the price of cabbages with Florrie Lindley. I'm your husband. Saturday the 12th of October on Granada Plus. Villain. You know, you quite frighten me at times. Scoundrel. What line are you in, Mr. Gold? Private means. Swindler. You don't suppose you give me his own money to you? Seducer. Sometimes I find people just get on. It is sometimes. Philanderer, lover, tempter. You are a naughty boy, of course. The Charmer, <laughs> tonight at 10 on Granada Plus. It was some form of like ladies' man, stroke, action man, bond man type of get everything fixed up type thing, weren't it? I think my parents, they always watched it without fail. Mr. Havers, weren't it? Because of the load of jealousy, I think, between my mum and my dad. Only one chocolate drink has all the taste of Cadbury's and is low in calories. Every day should have its highlights. You think after all this time I would have learnt, learnt to ask a few questions like, uh, are you married and things like that? My husband always wore a ring and I saw to it he kept it on and all. So did mine. Fat lot of good that did. <laughs> it was only a legalised lodger. <sighs> That's as may be. I've learnt my lesson. It won't happen again. I won't get my fingers burnt again. How you say? I mean it. Ooh, no doubt you do. Until tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after that. You know, sometimes you think you'll be dead before you can turn round. Life goes so fast. There are other times when it goes on and on and on. 
Ina and Elsie were very similar, which was probably at the root of their friction. I think Elsie probably saw herself as Ina in some umpteen years in the future. Um, again, both very strong, both wouldn't tolerate fools gladly, both very, very outspoken. Tack never was your strong point, was it? Well, Tack says what is known how far you can go too far with somebody, and when's that ever bothered you and me? Still, you want to play at prunes and prisms? Have you noticed anything different about Len Fairclough recently? Why me? He's your long-time friend, isn't he? Well, it's not many people that I have respect for their opinions, but you will have noticed that I've come to you when the pot's been boiling over before, if you remember. Yes, I've forgotten the favour a few weeks later. Oh, well, that's the way I am, isn't it? It's just that I don't bother to do battle with people I don't respect. I don't bother with to fight with the others. Oh, well, a backhanding compliment's better than none at all. Where's Len Fairclough taking you tonight? And how did that snippet get to you? Hey, you shouldn't go making arrangements in the rovers when Millie Colwell's around. Them little pink ears of hers, they pick up a bat stricken with laryngitis. My first thought about Pat Phoenix, for instance, was that she was incredibly beautiful. I, I couldn't take my eyes off her. I thought she was lovely to look at. I mean, she could have gone and done a personal appearance at 9 o'clock in the morning. She looked so lovely. But she always brought two extra sets of clothes with her. And then we would work say from 10 in the morning to one o'clock in one outfit and then she'd have luncheon and then she'd change into another lovely outfit you see to work the rest of the afternoon we all felt like sluts at the side of she was so lovely and then when the show had finished she'd dress into a lovely one for going out in the evening in and it was gorgeous but to try and battle in her dressing room it was all clothes clothes and suitcases i mean she should have been in hollywood really that's what she should have would have enjoyed Let's go down to our place. No. They talk too much about married men down your street. I'm not a married man. You don't act like one either. I'm a gay divorcee. Yes, and I'm what they call nobody's mug. The enthusiasm was extraordinary. She, um, she never lost the, the love of acting, and she was always excited about a new scene or a, or, or a new storyline, and uh, she really did love it. I'll tell you something. You know, if I had the chance of a fellow that would give me safety and security, another chance of a fellow would give me sleepless nights because I never knew what he was up to, I'd take the sleepless nights. I have no doubt. <laughs> Pat, at the best of times, would uh, wander off from the script and if, because she used to enjoy it so much that she thought, well, if she thinks of something better to say, she'd say it, really. <laughs> and uh, it was up to us to follow her. <laughs> and, uh, but she had... Well, the, her cue for drying was always, uh, if I bang on the table, come in with something. <laughs> and so that was really the way we worked. Very familiar, that wallpaper, Mrs. Ogden. Oh, you've noticed. It's the same as what's on your bedroom, Mrs. Walker. Isn't it amazing how different things seem in a different room? <laughs> Shut your eyes, Mrs. Walker. Bed. Shut your eyes, turn round and open them. Oh, my word, Mrs. Ogden. Hmm. Do you know, dear, I feel just a little giddy. <laughs> Would you mind if I sat facing the other way until I'm acclimatised? <laughs> well, either you're one for the great outdoors or you're not. Miss Alf, I am. Well, it's true, they're, 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 the women are very, very strong. That's not to say the men aren't good. They are. Uh, but Lancashire women are strong. The women in my family were very strong. And, of course, for a lot of women, um, over the last, what, 50 years, 70 years, they've lost their husbands and they've been the, the people to keep the families going. Of course, you know, the North has always been a matriarchal society and if you look back over the years certainly the beginning years of the street 35 years ago most of the scenes apart from the rovers but most of the scenes were in homes houses and of course women would be in charge in their homes uh, so maybe the stories just revolved around the home and so they're the stories that the writers ended up writing about their survivors and they all do have this tremendous, strong, northern sense of humour, which I think is the main strength of the street. And perhaps the two things are linked, that having a sense of humour helps you to survive. 
without one you couldn't do the other. As sure as I'm standing here, that car outside that door is Derek's. Oh, the fast cat. She's still got him up there. Wouldn't credit it, would you? Mavis! I haven't put sugar in. Oh, no, not for me, thanks. Oh. How's Derek? Oh, he... Um, I'll just get my coffee. Did he get that? Just like you said. Bright red and spilling rout edges. Be shinning down drain pipes now in his underpants. Oh, is there no end to it? Hmm. Is uh, Derek still here? Pardon? Derek? His car is outside door. Oh, is it? Come on, love. We're all girls together. Fetch him down, give him a cup of coffee, we'll send out. Well, there's nothing to say, because Derek certainly isn't here. He left his car outside because he took a taxi home last night. What for? Because he'd had at least three glasses of wine, that's what for. It was well over the limit and it is the firm's car. You're kidding us, aren't you? He's upstairs with his head under bedclothes. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Uh, Derek is not upstairs. Anyway, how do you know so much about it? Well, uh, I was telling her that uh, I had to stay away overnight and you'd be here on your own. Yeah, and she was dead worried. I just happened to be passing the bus station and she was getting off the Doncaster bus. Thought it was Huddersfield you went to. Oh, it yes. was. It was. You see, I, I haven't been to either, so I wouldn't know the difference. It was definitely... Huddersfield. The Huddersfield bus. And she was standing there with an agonised expression mm. on her face. She's talked about nowt else all the way here, apart from you being on your Todd with your boyfriend. It wasn't. No. Just... You see, she wasn't. You needn't have worried. No, I can see that now. Yes, there's only one thing I can't see. Huh? If he were too stoned to drive himself home, why didn't you get him in an half Nelson and drag him in the back bedroom? Northern women are natural performers. And all the mothers of my friends were either tragedy queens or comedians, but they were all entertainers and they were all very strong. So I think that the street's got it right. I mean, uh, I've been married twice in the show and I'm still henpecking the one I've got. <laughs> now it's a shame. But they all are. We all are. We're all a bit, 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 bit bossy, you know. Treat men like fools and it's awful. <laughs> and I think women also uh, I, are dominant uh, in most homes. And um, this is shown in the street. I think it's probably a true reflection of um, what will go on in most streets. I remember someone once saying, if you've hurt a child, who would you rather tell, the father or the mother? And most people say the father. We're used um, to seeing strong characters in men, maybe it's just interesting to see strong characters in women and so maybe therefore the writers like to bring that out in the women. Perhaps you should ask a writer. We're partly following the template that Tony Warren laid down when he wrote those first episodes. Uh, the women are by and large strong, outspoken, courageous, honest, hard-working, the men are shiftless, idle, lying, deceitful, cowardly. It's a wonderful template. It's survived all this time. We still follow that pattern. Uh, to uh, freedom. 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 And men only pump. Men only pump. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I thought you were in the flying horse. Now, love, that's just where you hoped I was. Had a hard day, have you? Oh, I'm a back spanner. I think I've overdone it. Ah, still, never mind. I've got someone to cure it waiting for you, Tom. Oh, I... A flaming great brush and a big bucket of paste to go with it. And if you're not out of this pub in ten seconds flat, you get the lot of you Now, listen, who wears a pants in our house? You don't really want me to go into that, do you? In front of all your friends? What friends? Go on, oh! Well, I hope we've managed to rekindle some golden moments for those of you who've been watching us through the years. For the newcomers, as you can see, Weatherfield's populated with some very strong women who, like them or hate them, are difficult to ignore. But the men don't come off too badly. They even get the last word, occasionally. So sit back, relax, and indulge yourself to relive a legend that I'm proud to be part of. Coronation Street. 
You can see the first episode of Classic Coronation Street tonight at 9.25 on Granada Plus.